Okay, so now we know how to make a data set in Torch. What we're going to do is, is look at some utilities to train a model on that data set. And so we'll replicate some of the steps that we did manually, but we'll have Torch do the heavy lifting for us now. So, okay, in this little example here, I was, I was looping through all of the data and pulling out each example individually and plotting each example individually. There's actually a way to get Torch to collate little chunks of the data called mini batches at once using something called a data loader. So let me show you how to make one here. So if I were to say loader equals data loader, so this is something that was also imported from Torch up here in addition to data set. So if I were to say data equals data loader, and first parameter I'll pass along is the data set. Second parameter is something called the batch size, which is how many examples are going to be collated together. And the other thing I want to do is shuffle this. So let me show you what the data loader does. So from the data set, we got an individual example. But from the data loader, we can get a whole chunk of, of batch size, a whole chunk of 16 examples in this case. So if I were to say the following, so, so loader is also an iterator. Um, if I were to say this, there's a little bit of magic here, but if I say this, um, I'm going to get out a whole chunk of inputs and a whole chunk of outputs. Um, let's actually take a look at what is in each of these, just to show you. So X is now an, an entire array of examples. So it's actually a two-dimensional array uh, where each inner element is, is an individual input. And then Y is, is an array of, of the corresponding outputs. So if I were to print the shape of each of these, I would see that X is a 16 by two array and Y is a, I believe six, yeah, just like 16 flat one dimensional array. So actually one thing that's kind of nice about Torch is, is um, the arrays are compatible with Matplotlib. So I could actually slice everything the same way, pass it onto Matplotlib and I'll color the points by their label. And so that is called a mini batch, all right? So that's just 16 examples that got randomly shuffled from, from the data set. Every time I run this, I should get a slightly different batch, a slightly different set of examples here, sampled from the whole data set, right? Okay. Now I am ready to feed these batches one at a time to a training loop that will update some parameters. Okay. So, so first thing I want to do actually is, is try to use the GPU because this, this is going to be faster than um, using, maybe not for this example, but in the future, it's going to be a lot faster than using the CPU. So we're going to try to use something called CUDA, which is going to um, run a lot of these neural networks on the GPU. And let's see. So for me, I have access to CUDA. Um, it falls back to just your regular CPU, though, if, if it doesn't. Okay, now the next step is um, create, well, okay, so, so let me be consistent with how I was before. Step one was really get the data, which we've, we've already done. Step two is create the model, right? Or, or, you know, set up a function space that we're going to sample from. And we're just going to use the, the um, you know, the logistic perceptron again but we're gonna do it in Torch this time. So, so here is how we do it in Torch. So I've imported this thing up here called um, uh, NN from the Torch library. So I'm gonna say perceptron equals NN.linear. And this is, okay, so, so here we have um, two dimensions in our input, right? Each input is two coordinates. So two dimensions down to one. Actually, let me go ahead and use that just so it's general. I'll use that variable dim. So, so input is dim dimensions, output is one dimension. Okay. And also, I can move the parameters of this perceptron. So it'll have three parameters, the, the A, B, and C, like I was showing before. So I can also move those parameters over to the GPU. So that's it for setting up the model. Um, I do now also, okay, so step three is, is I need to set up the loss function. Now in Torch, it looks like this. So we're gonna use the, the logistic loss that we did before. So I'll say torch.nn.bce with logits loss. Um, hang on a second. bce with log 
launch it. Launch it. What? Oops. Um, just having trouble with that. Oh, because um, I meant to say perceptron to two device. Okay. There we go. Uh, loss function, and I meant to say torch. Okay, that's why it wasn't autocomplete. Good. So I have my loss function. What this stands for is binary cross entropy. That is actually a generalization of, of what we um, defined before for logistic loss. And that's good for our loss. Okay. But actually, we need to define one more thing here, which is the optimizer. So this is going to be an object that performs the updates of the parameters according to the loss function and the loss function's derivative. So I'm going to use something called Adam, which is a pretty common choice here. Um, and I'm going to say, okay, what we're optimizing over is the parameters of this perceptron, which I can actually access with this method here. And then I can also specify a loss rate. So maybe I'll start with this loss rate, kind of similar to what we were looking at before. All right, so that's good. Um, all right, so, so that's the whole setup here, and now I can do the training. So what I'll do is, is I'll do something called an epic. Um, I'm gonna define something called an epoch, which is, um, so each epoch is a loop through the entire data set. Um, and we use this to update the parameters, cycling through the data set many times over again. All right, so I'm gonna do that. Let me keep track of the losses as I go, and let me also keep track of the accuracy as I go. Okay, so, so what I'm going to do is have this outer loop that goes through each epic. So epic and range and number of epics. Let me just print a little dot to, to let myself know what the progress is each time. Okay, and now let me set up this, this data loader each time. So every time I start an epic, I'm going to make a new data loader that reshuffles the data. And then what I'm going to do is loop through each mini batch that comes out of the data loader. So there's going to be a bunch of these coming out. Let me take each one in turn. So say four X, Y and loader. Um, so this goes through each mini batch. And then I'm going to um, first move the inputs and outputs to the GPU. That's something I have to do. For this to work. So I'll say X is equal to X dot two device, and I'll say y is equal to y dot two device. Okay, now I can, okay, so I have to reset um, the optimizer, optimizers gradients from last time, the, the derivatives, I have to reset them, so I have to say optimizer dot zero grad, turns out. Um, now I'm gonna run the model, run the perceptron model on all inputs. So I can say, okay, my um, estimation is going to be the model, or actually, I call it perceptron here, perceptron run on my inputs. Okay, so, so that's going to give me the um, estimate. But what I should do then is compute the loss function, um, comparing y estimate. So to do that, I'm going to write loss equals loss function, and the first parameter is the estimate. And actually, it turns out this estimate is, is a two-dimensional array for some reason, so I have to just take out the first column. And I'm going to compare that to what I know are supposed to be the labels here. Right? And then I'm going to be able to compute the gradients of the loss function with respect to all of the parameters of the model. And so that is as simple as a one line thing loss dot backward. And so, you know. Before, we, we did this out by hand, where we, we computed what the gradients were, right? I, I showed you, okay, here's, here's a formula for the gradient um, if you're looking over all examples. But this just does it for us. And, and this is gonna be particularly good um, when we go and um, do much more complicated models than this. Okay, good, so we got the gradient. And then the last thing is, is, is just to um, update the parameters based on the gradient and the optimization scheme. And this is also a nice one minor. It's just optimizer.step. So we set up that optimizer up here with the learning rate and some strategy. 
and it knows what parameters it's supposed to update. Once we compute the gradient, um, it's going to take a step and it's going to update those parameters by so much. And again, um, you know, we, we had this step here and actually it was quite simple in code. Um, I just said, you know, A plus equals the learning rate times this sum here and, and B plus. So for logistic perceptron with logistic loss, this is very easy. We could do it by hand. Um, but, but again, this is, this is going to get more complicated later when we use a fancier model. Okay, so I think that's right. Um, I also set up a little code beforehand over here. I'm just going to paste it in. Um, at the end of each, okay, so each epoch or epoch um, goes through a bunch of mini batches, right? So it's going to take out like a bunch of examples of 16 um, inputs and outputs. And for each of those, it's going to update the parameters. So, so it's going to run through um, gradient descent just on those examples. You know, before we did something called batch gradient descent, kind of a confusing name. <laughs> um, but but we, we actually updated the, the um, parameters based on every single example, right? But here, we, we actually update the parameters just on a set of 16 examples, and then we go to the next 16 and the next 16. So, so we update the parameters for, for a small set of examples, which actually turns out to work a little bit better in practice. So it's called mini-batch gradient descent. Um, so we do that for, for each um, epoch. Then, you know, I had some code here that, that is going to evaluate um, on the entire data set what, what the total loss is, and also how many I got correct. All right, so, so I wrote some code to do that. And so let's let's run through this and, and see how it does. Okay, so, so it ran there. And then I can plot the progress here, and I see quite good performance. So, so the loss starts out kind of high, but, but then it starts to, to converge here. And then same thing with accuracy, it starts out pretty low. So loss goes down, accuracy goes up. That's, that's, that's very common, that's what you expect to see. So if it's working well. So accuracy ends up, you know, probably somewhere low 90%. And so what I can do is, is, all right, so that's fine, I know the accuracy, but I can actually um, analyze the model a little bit more. And so I can actually look at those parameters of the perceptron, I can take them out. Um, so the first one is, is all the parameters uh, of, of the, the linear part of this, like the you know, first coefficient times x and then the second coefficient times y. The second part is the bias there. So I can, so I can unpack all of the parameters this way, take them back from the GPU to the CPU, um, and then what I'll do is, is, is I will loop through a bunch of examples here and, and plot the results of applying this model to them. And so I could do the same kind of visualization like I did before. So yeah, it was low 90s, about 92% accuracy. But the difference is Torch did this all for us and we're going to be able to do a lot more with Torch. So, so that's the training loop and that's how it works. It's not too bad. Um, it's always kind of the same deal. You know, you move the examples that you're going to try to use to update the parameters um, onto whatever device this has. You reset the gradient. You run the model. You compute the loss function based on the estimates of the model. You compute the gradients of the loss function with respect to your parameters, and then you use those gradients to tweak the parameters and move them in a better direction. So exactly what we did manually before, but, but here it is running in Torch, running on the GPU. Everything is very fancy. All right, so I'm just going to have a little exercise for you to do um, based on this, and then, and then um, that will be it for now.